You uh, have been a button collector your whole life. And how did you get into this hobby? Were you from a family of button collectors? Yes, basically my grandmother started at least 40 years, 40 years ago. And then um, ever since then, it's just kind of grown. She started and then my mom, of course, and then my dad married into it. And then I was born into it. So it's kind of been a whole family thing. Is there a specific area of buttons that you're interested in, like a certain era of history or modern one? Um, you know, when I first started out, I'm, I don't have a lot of money, so I tried to go to the cheaper ones, but I really like glass buttons. There's a type of moon glow, and they, um, they have like an air, and there's like a glass capsule over top of it. There's air inside, so I'm really interested in that. I'm, that's one of my growing interests. I've always had um, the cheaper ones. I started out with snap togethers, and the shank of the button goes through, and they come apart. And that's the one I started out with, and then I've kind of moved to upper level more. So, Do you go to a lot of these conventions? Um, yeah, my family, we usually go to the, the Missouri Button Show, the Missouri State Button Show, and the Kansas State Button Show, and then the National Button Show. So, And that's in a different place each year. There are three uh, clubs within the, same, within the Missouri area. There's one in Kansas City, one in Springfield, and another one in St. Louis. But the spring is the spring show always here at the Econo Lodge in Sedalia? Yes, we typically meet every uh, April, usually the last full weekend of April. We get together and we have button competitions and then we have dealers who come from actually all over the country uh, to come and show us some of their buttons and people get to come and buy some of the really the best and most fascinating buttons that there are. Uh, the way the button competition works is, for instance, I might think I have a very good collection of buttons that uh, have cats let's say, and then I might challenge some of the other members uh, to say, okay, let's see who can come up with the 25 best assortment of buttons that depict cats. And so um, you have a year to get ready for it, and then you would bring in and you would have a, a card that would have 25 of your best cat buttons. And the person who wins usually is the one who has the most, um, the best assortment of materials because buttons come in just a, a wide, wide array of materials, um, and then things that are more unusual, some of the older buttons, and a lot of these go back, a lot of the ones you see here will go as far back as the 18th century. Very finely done, um, beautiful examples that you would expect to see in jewelry, but actually were worn as buttons, and the sort of thing you don't see nowadays. For me, it was I found some buttons in an antique shop, uh, and I thought, well, these are fascinating little pieces of glass, multicolor, and I thought, I want to learn more about this. I found some books at a library, and then my mother discovered that there were clubs. We started coming to the clubs, and really it just sort of mushroomed from there because now we collect just all sorts of buttons. It's really fascinating. Is it an expensive hobby to get into or an affordable one? It can be pretty much as much as you want it to be. I mean, we have buttons on some of the tables here that, that are just little poke boxes full of uh, buttons. It could be as much as 50 cents. Um, and it can range all the way up from buttons that are valued in the thousands of dollars if you're talking about like some museum quality pieces.